It's another of those exciting eBay products that has slightly exaggerated power ratings. It comes in the obligatory extremely crinkly bag, which I shall stick out the way. Comes a USB charge lead, comes with a little lanyard, and it is no less than a 98 kilowatt uh, LED flashlight. And before MD says, oh, that's actually the model number, actually 98KW, they'd written it as 98 and then the thousands separate, or then the three zeros watt. So 98 kilowatt. Let me uh, blow a hole right through my bench with this amazingly high power light. Oh no, look, it's smoke coming off it already. It's not that bright. It's not 98 kilowatts. It has three modes and it's focusable. The focusing works pretty well, actually. I don't know if I can pull it back far enough to focus on the little chip inside. Uh, from a decent distance, you get the classic Cree knockoff type chip effect. It has other modes, though. It's got the dim mode with a slight pulse of modulation flicker and then the obligatory strobing mode. So strobe alert, it's not going to be very bright though. It's strobing and it's off. Pressing and holding the button does not go into SOS mode. When you plug it into charge, the LED flashes. In, there's a red LED inside. When the battery is running low, it also flashes, which is quite useful. Now, I'm not really sure how this is going to come to bits. I don't know how they put this bit on, for instance. Does it get crimped? Or does this lens come out to give access to unscrew something? But I'm not sure that's... No, it, it's out. <laughs> yes. It's really out. Uh, so, apparently to take it apart, you just use brute force and ignorance, and uh, that's it out. There is what looks a bit like a double-A-sized nickel... Uh, not a nickel. Uh, a lithium cell. Now, here's the next bit of the puzzle. Is... Getting this bit out here, because I think the way these are manufactured, they're just physically pressed in. So I'm going to try and lever the circuit board out, but this is going to damage the... The aluminium casing is indeed crumpling with the force of this thing just being wedged in. I don't think this is going to come out easily. Tell you what, let's peel it out, because let's face it, although it's quite nice, it's not that nice. So I shall literally peel it out. Yeah, this is not how you open them. Do you want a closer look? Yeah, let's get closer to see the carnage happening. This is a very annoying trend of this type of product, where they have no screws, or not even glue, I don't think, in many instances, but they just rely on a friction fit uh, assembly. I could have pushed out the battery from this end, but I don't want to push the battery and short it out. Is this going to come out yet? No. No, not going to come out. Hold on. Let's peel more metal away. Scrunchy, anodized aluminium type noises. Uh, this may take a moment. The spudger is not going to be so great on this uh, tight fitting round case, right? Tell you what, one moment please. I'll just pause while I get this out. It is out. It took a while. Uh, there's probably a nice way to take it out, but I didn't use it. Here is the circuit board. It's a little square circuit board. Well, let's explore the circuit board. It's going to be super minimalist. I can see the classic 8-pin chip. I can see a transistor on that side and a transistor on that side. One of those is switching the LED. The other one is part of the charge control circuit, isn't it? Okay, you know the script. I shall pause and we'll reverse engineer this. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is done. Let's explore the construction first. It is all friction fit here. Here is the LED module, and an LED on a little aluminium heatsink is physically rammed up the end so it kind of latches into this. There's an O ring on the outside, and the O ring is purely for that sort of friction as it slides backwards and forwards the lens. This is also a friction fit into the end of this case, and it's actually used to hold the whole. Uh, telescopic lens assembly in position. So to assemble this, this is uh, machined with a series of ribs in it, and uh, this goes in like this, pushes down, and you can see that sort of uh, sliding action in there, that slight friction. Then this lens, once the thing has been pushed into position, is pushed down until it clicks into a little lip in there. When this is put into here, and that is pressed down, the LED locks in at that point. This can slide up and down as needed for that sort of zooming effect. 
On the other end, I'd guess at this point in time, these wires that stick out the end will be soldered onto this small circuit board. It's me worth mentioning that this is a nice fit into the housing here. It's just designed to just clip in. And uh, it is held in place by the look of it just by a foam pad on the end of the lithium cell when it's connected. And uh, when it's mounted like that, it, this end is literally just then friction fitted into the end. In hindsight, knowing what I know now, uh, I might have tried levering it out by sliding a screwdriver where this little silicone button is. Maybe a screwdriver like this. Slide it under like that, perhaps. Risk of breaking the plastic, but that might have given some sort of way to actually pull this off the end of the tube, but it's not that easy to do. The circuit board now. The lithium cell is 160 milliamp power after a few cycles, um, which is okay, but not that great for something this size. It means that you could literally get a fourfold improvement if you used a battery out of a vapor type device. That one, if the wood battery wouldn't fit in it, but a standard one, the 550 milliamp hour. If we take a look at the circuit board, on one side, I'll zoom out a little bit. And focus down onto this. It's a very, very lightly populated circuit board. This is the charge control side. So there's the USB in inlet. Uh, there's a switch for selecting the modes. There's the charge status LED. There is another position for an LED here. I did try soldering one in, but it's super uh, narrow. I don't think it's going to be used anyway because this is a red LED and it's used in two modes. It's uh, either static to show it's charging, uh, to charged or flashing to show it's charging. I did try get in there, but as you can see, it's not much space in there. And I don't think the LED I was using was quite the right size anyway. So this is what regulates the charging. There is a standard NPN transistor and a 100 ohm resistor that biases the base up towards the collector uh, to actually turn the transistor on, but then it's controlled by the chip on the other side. The chip on the other side monitors the voltage in that pin uh, and then it can uh, regulate the progress of the charging. Although when it's completed, it's interesting that it just bounces. I'm wondering if it is just a switchable uh, voltage regulator in there that just basically sets a voltage threshold for that. But I'll show you that in the schematic. This transistor here, there's no uh, resistors used for the LED or the uh, transistors other than that resistor on the other side for the charge control. Uh, they're just driven by current limited pins in the microcontroller. Uh, but this transistor switches the output, the LED the main LED of the unit is connected across these pins. The battery is connected across these, so the common battery to the LED, and then the negative is switched via this transistor to the LED with no current limiting. No great surprises there. They don't do that. They just say, let's go for maximum brightness by just not using resistors. Here is the very sparse circuit diagram. There's the incoming USB supply. And it charges the lithium cell via this transistor, which is normally biased on by this 100 ohm resistor. But uh, this, the microcontroller, is it possibly a switchable, almost like a, a Zener diode in here, a, or a very precise regulator? Uh, I tried connecting a capacitor across there, but it was a fair low value, 2200, and it floated up to 4.3 volts. Not sure that's a good sign. But uh, the charge pin there is also used to monitor the whether it's being charged. And I did find that when I was trying to measure the voltage across that, it was just bouncing about all the time because it was switching between controlling the transistor and also just letting go to actually just check the voltage. So it does keep charging little pulses, even when it's fully charged. So I wouldn't leave this in charge all the time. So there is the main positive rail here with the lithium cell and there's the high output LED in the front with the transistor switching it. There is a button to select the modes and there is the red charging LED. And that is more or less it. The LED that's not connected uh, would be connected like this. It may have been they had charging and charged two separate LEDs, but instead they've just saved an LED basically by uh, just flashing this one to show a different status from just static. But that is it. It's interesting. I'll continue doing a few more tests on this, but it is just very cheaply made. 
it's hackable, but the hardest bit is getting the bits out of this. You could uh, also use the battery to push the other end out if you did what I did earlier on and you pull the top off like this, even though it does, you know, a bit more control would actually maybe not rip the wires out. However, pushing the battery down, it does press just on the chip. There's no sharp points and there is a foam pad there, but you always wonder if it's going to uh, potentially damage the battery and make it go nuclear. Not that 160 milliamp hour would be that bad. Uh, the connections are just soldered onto the end, which is a bit naughty, but it's what they've done. This connector is just one I added on for testing. But there we go. It's a super minimalist design. It works. It's only 98 kilowatts. There's 98 kilowatts of disappointment. But other than that, as a flashlight, I suppose actually it would be quite serviceable.